Hey you guys, it's your girl Beauty with Mika. So I am back with something new and something different. A friend of mine asked me to do the best of luxury products that I love for 2020. Now she sent me a video and the person that did this was Michelle Wong. I'll post her channel down below in her video. So she did the best of luxury makeup for 2020. I thought it was a great idea and obviously we always do our best ofs every year. Of course you guys know I'm gonna come back and give you my best of 2020 favorites. Even though we were going through a crazy time for 2020, there are still some favorites and some things that I've used throughout this year. So I wanted to go ahead and get started and give you my version of my best of luxury for 2020 some of these products are basically i put them in the price range of anything over 20 to 25 dollars going up so i'm gonna start off with i pretty much went in everything that i feel like is best of luxury in my art um collection that i've obviously kept talk to you guys about reviewed and whatnot so let's go ahead and start off with foundations now the first foundation is the Shiseido. this is their synchronized synchronized skin self um refreshing foundation this is oil free it has a broad brand spectrum of spf 30 as you guys can see i am in the shade 530 henna so i will definitely post all the links to all these products down below so you guys can get them because they are still available also i will be including in this video some not so favorites for best of so this one is a really great foundation i really do like the Shiseido line I was I remember I got this and I was a little skeptical but I went on and purchased it because I really do like again the Shiseido line and I was like you know what let me try this if you are combo oily skin like myself you guys will love this I feel like it gives you a long lasting wear I will say I haven't been using it as much as I want to for 2020 because normally I like foundations that will give me over a 10 hour wear because you guys obviously if you don't know my wear schedule can, can go about 10 to 12 hours a day and right now with everything that's going on for 2020 I am constantly on video calls so I always have to have a beat face. Now all right, so two other foundations. Foundation that I put in my shop, my stash for this year, I don't remember which month but was the Dior Forever. I'm in the shade 6. 0.5 neutral i picked mine up at macy's a few years ago honestly it's still within the time frame for me to use and i really do like this one this one gives similar to the pat mcgrath but this one gives a very long wearing i only need a little bit of this and it gives me the best full coverage i go for full coverage foundations you guys i go for medium buildable full coverage foundations all right so last but not least for the foundations it's the charlotte tilbury you guys are going to hear a lot about charlotte tilbury during this video but the charlotte tilbury foundation i'm in the shade 15 neutral this will be a repurchase hands down if i had to keep anything out of all the foundations that i mentioned it would definitely be the charlotte tilbury as my top winner for the best of luxury for 2020 why because this foundation has never disappointed me first i was skeptical because charlotte tilbury for a while she wasn't really expanding on her shade ranges a lot of things were like oh what's going on okay that's not a brand that I really want to give credence to or recognize and spend my money with but I will say between the past 2019 2020 year she has really stepped up her game on foundations and expanding her shade ranges so she recently came out with this one this is her airbrush flawless finish love it to death speaking of Charlotte Tilbury let's go ahead and talk about the rest of her products that I have so for under eyes for all over face you guys have heard me talk about her airbrush flawless finish I have the shades dark three which dark three is most her uh current no it's her old one so she came out with dark three it was only three shades dark three was really really good the one thing i like about dark three is that you could use this to highlight under your um under eyes you could set this down your t-zone you could use this as a retouch when you're uh if you want to be on the go she recently added to that line and she rebrand recreated the flawless finish and she added deep four so with deep four i really do like this one again this one reminds me of if i can get this in like a finely milled i would take that also but i really do like the compact form of this i really wish that hopefully soon she adds a refillable because speaking of that her bronzer oh my god i would this bronzer you could purchase the case and it looks like a oyster shell for me i actually like it i this is just luxury in itself for what you get but for the price that you're spending you will get you're able to purchase the refill and this is her airbrush bronzer you guys such a natural finish ah. <laughs> such a natural finish such it's just oh if you got pores like me like around my nose around my under eyes you guys have seen it trust me it just like just boom 
all in your face smooth finish no regrets i will say charlotte tilbury has not disappointed me and i do not feel like i have wasted my money purchasing any of her products this year all right so let's go on to blushes because i only have two blushes and honestly the two blushes that i recently purchased that i love is the patrick Todd blushes i was a little skeptical about these i have in an oh she's different which is this uh like pinky burgundy color i feel like these two colors were great for women of color and then i also have she's so la now she's so la i did wear recently and i will tell you guys this is more of like a neutral glowy bronze blush it's very subtle on the face but it gives you a very nice glow now i know that patrick Ta has said you put your powder on first then you do the cream i personally have not done that i am a stickler of i know it works against my skin because i have oily skin so i always do the powder and then set it um no i do the cream and then set it with the powder another thing that i have not heard a lot of people mention is if you just notice it has a flap so if you're wondering if the um product will get into like it'll mix in so powder and blush it does have a flap on here to cover it so that was one of the reasons why i went on and purchased them but i will say the patrick Todd blushes hands down get your hands on them they he that he did it he did it he did that now another patrick top another patrick top item that i completely love i feel like i don't need a backup of it because i'm not going to use it often and with everything going on obviously you guys know i've got my brows microbladed in the past and i don't want to get them done anymore i don't feel like i need them so i picked up the patrick todd brow wax this is his shaping wax i got it in the tinted brown color i'm currently wearing it right now as you guys can see it gives me that natural finish a little bit of it goes a long way so you guys can see i really have my spoolie in here but i really do like this product i will say if you're women of color you definitely want to go for the tinted shade and then if your skin tone is lighter than me you definitely want to go for more of the clear shade it just depends is your preference if you want to go for clear try it out i just feel like i have because i haven't tried the clear this one is the best one now let's go on to brows so for brows there are no yeah brows there's only one it's a benefits precisely my brow i know this is probably not considered luxury but honestly there has not been a luxury brow pencil that i have loved this year you guys know i didn't i was not a fan of the hourglass um the hourglass brow pencil i was not a fan of the fenty brow pencil and i don't think anyone else came out with decent brow pencils that i wanted to try but the benefits precisely my brow i am in the shade 4.5 4.5 for a darker and four if you want something a little bit lighter i always kind of like mix the two but these hands down you cannot go wrong with these are 24 dollars and when i tell you guys this is all that i've been using i swear when i started to really want to protect perfect my brow because obviously i wasn't getting microblading this was like a wizard hand like you put it in your hand and it just does it moves your hand to where you want to do your brows so i highly highly say get the benefits precisely my brows especially when they go on sale now don't come for me in the comments do not recently fenty came out with something that was bomb like you guys have heard me talk about it i tried the mini version and i was like okay i'm gonna go back and spend the money and i believe this is like 24 dollars for the full size but girl you see that pencil you want the perfect wing oh my god and recently i thought about purchasing some more of her fly liners just for color purposes so if i don't want to do any eyeshadow and i just want to do a bomb little sharp wing i can go ahead and use it so hands down the fenty one actually beats kevon d if you had to ask me only because the tips or this one is just that pointed tip it lasts just as long and it does just the bomb feeling so fenty hands down fly liner and what is the shade because i'm black get it get it get it get it now let's go on to some mascaras one of the mascaras that recently i have talked about i said i would repurchase and i love 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 is the anastasia lash bang mascara i don't have it so i'll insert a picture right here but i will tell you guys that one has been a favorite of mine for 2020 as far as luxury anastasia came out with some really good products this year and that was one of them now another one that you guys have heard me talk about is the estee lauder scrumptious extreme last multiplying mascara my god sister told me to try this a while back and i was skeptical i purchased it at the last sephora sale in early spring tried it went back and repurchased it recently because i was like girl this is really really good like really really good another mascara that i recently that i have been loving for 2020 is the hourglass caution extreme lash mascara for some reason i just started getting caught up really with a lot of the um high-end mascaras 
and this was one of them i'm finding that when i purchase mascaras now i look at the brushes because if you look at the brush you know that the brush will actually do what you need it to do for your mascaras so these brushes have been like doing it like i look and i'm like mm, if it's a curve i'm not purchasing so check the brushes on your mascaras that you love and then you will know how you purchase your mascaras in the future Another one that I'm wearing right now is because I like mascaras that give me length and volume is the Laura Mercier Caviar Volume. I am in the shade Glossy Black. So they get, it doesn't really give a gloss look, but it actually does give you a nice subtle black, matte black look. It doesn't clump your lashes or anything. Another mascara, last but not least, this one came out before the Anastasia. This is the Fenty Full Throttle because I'm black mascara. I really do like this one. The packaging is about the same as the Anastasia. So I definitely will say if I had to repurchase one over the other, I would actually repurchase both of these because they do the same job but different ways for me. If you would get that. All right, you guys, so let's go on to lip products. I only have two lip balms that I recently or have been loving for 2020. The first one is the Summer Fridays Lip Balm. Now, you guys know I have used other lip balms in the past, but this one I would repurchase again. It's $20, but you guys will see I have been like using this, using this. I feel like I really want to purchase another one, and I'm hoping they come out with other scents. This one is vanilla, so it's just a pure lip balm. It does last all day on your lips. You could apply this, wear this. It does what it's supposed to do, but it it is $20 so it's kind of like yeah I would have repurchased this again and honestly I would even keep one probably in my car in my purse for sake of I just know that's one of my go-to lip balms another one that I'm wearing right now even with my lipstick on is the Fenty Beauty this is their luscious lip balm this is hint hint it gives you a slight little bit of tint on your lips but it's just enough and I really really do like this one now let's go on to concealers so for concealers you guys have heard me talk about these over and over and i recently had to purchase a lighter shade because i was just like addicted i've been addicted to these these are the kevin and con sensual skin enhancers i have the shade sx 15 you guys see i put a dent in that bad boy oh my god i've had to hide this for myself because this was all i was using with like layering my concealers for more of a color correcting shade and I think this is going to be my permanent for color correcting this is SX14 this one I started using and then I recently put it up but I will say that I really do like this one for color correcting with the sensual skin enhancers honestly you guys could actually use these by themselves or you could layer these with your concealer and set it with a good setting powder and you'll be good to go now another concealer two other concealers that I will like but I'll tell you guys if I repurchase them or not the first one is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Away Liquid Concealer. I'm almost done with this. Like, I have been trying to use this up. Now, the pros to this is really good. Gives you a full coverage. It's really thick. It sets perfectly. I'm currently wearing it right now. You guys cannot see anything. It gives you that flawless finish. The negative to this is it has a sponge applicator. So when I went into the Charlotte Tilbury store, I had told the sales rep that I honestly did not like the sponge applicator. And I wanted to, you know, see if there was another option for this concealer or maybe a dupe applicator or something. And she explained to me that a tip that they do inside the store is they actually remove the applicator, the sponge applicator off. And they basically use it. So what I did was, and I'm going to show you guys. I came home, I took her advice, and I removed the sponge applicator. And now I pump it up, I get enough off with my brush, and it works just as good. But I would only repurchase this if they change the applicator. If they don't change the applicator, I'm honestly not going to repurchase it. But it is a favorite of mine in a way of, as soon as I know they change it, oh girl, I'm buying it up. Now, another concealer, my girl Kay's Way told me about this concealer, and I was like, girl... I have I was like not gonna purchase this. This is the hourglass concealer in the shade Mocha Girl. Woo! This concealer, you could wear it by itself. Like you know those no makeup days where you just want to do a quick wing liner, some concealer and some brows. Snatched, flawless, beat good. I am so in love with this concealer. This will be a repurchase, hands down. A little bit of it goes a long way. And when I'll show you guys the applicator on here it has that applicator girl this is one of those concealers honestly that it's like you don't need a highlighter shade because you could always set with a powder or something but hourglass they stepped up their game this year with this one now you guys know it's very rare that i talk about an hourglass product but this concealer psh, girl 
make sure you add this to your collection now concealer that i was not happy with and i will not be repurchasing and i'm just looking past it is the pat mcgrath concealer in d32 i did not like this concealer her shade ranges on her concealers and her setting powders are so off that i would not repurchase this i used this for almost two months in my shop my stash series and i could not get the shade right if you guys see it has a slight red orange undertone and when i tell you guys nah like no do not i just i just like look past keep walking exit stage left i was not a fan of it it does give you a really good coverage don't get me wrong but the shade ranges are so off that it's hard to find that perfect match in the concealers and in her setting powders now i know you guys are waiting so let's go on to eyeshadows now for eyeshadows I have pulled out all my Pat McGrath individual eyeshadows. These are $29 a piece. I'm not going to lie to you guys. But honestly, you guys have known I purchased a lot of the Pat McGrath shadows either when they go on sale for $12 at Sephora or during the Sephora sales. So a lot of these are her staple ones. And I've actually purchased some neutral ones for my hairstyles. And she loves them, especially when they were like $12. So I'll just go through quickly and show you guys each shade that I have. Lapsus Luxury. And this is a pretty blue. I have Rose uh, Venus. I have Crimson Fire, which looks similar to what I'm wearing now. I have Deep Violet. The one thing I will say I like about these is that you could travel with them, throw them in your purse, girl, you love them. This is Statuesque, which is a neutral. This one is Burnished Honey. This one is another burnish honey. I purchased two burnish honeys, but I mean, it's a cute transition shade. Let me see. I'll show you guys what it looks like. It is like the perfect transition shade if you want something simple in the crease. And last but not least, Sexual Root. So yeah, I purchased all of those. Now, speaking of Pat McGrath, the one palette that she came out with that shocked all of us was her Pat McGrath um celestial divinity palette girl for 78 dollars hello 78 dollars girl get your hands on this you need this i looked at this palette when it first came out i was just like that's a 300 dollars palette because we all know pat mcgrath palettes are over 100 dollars. and when i tell you guys i was like that's gonna be about a 300 dollars palette when it came out to 78 dollars I was still skeptical, but thanks to Influence, they sent me this to review for free. So I was so grateful, but honestly, I would have purchased this at the $78 price. Now let's go on to four other shadows, and then I'm going to end this video with setting sprays. So uh, let's talk about Natasha Denona. You guys know I always love Natasha Denona. I picked up her mini Zito palette. I purchased this one during the Sephora sale, and these are just any of the Natasha Denona palettes you can't go wrong with. Like, let's just talk about it. Now, her best of for 2020 that she came out with that became my best of was honestly two of them. And hands down, bronze is my number one purchase. Um, you could not have went wrong if you were a neutral girl, if you bronze. The bronze palette from Pat McGrath is just the go-to. Like, you would want this palette. I honestly say depending on your style as far as makeup and your trends natasha Denona has so many different palettes that you can choose from you don't need all of them but you can pick one or two and you'll be good in your collection bronze is definitely a hit for me i was about to fall girl now last one that i actually love because i do like to use color a lot is the sunrise palette from natasha Denona. that became my this one is my best of for 2020 as far as luxury because i do like the colors in here i feel like you only you really need like your a colorful palette from natasha Denona or a neutral palette and girl you're good to go so sunrise and bronze hands down all right, so let's go ahead and finish off with primers and setting sprays. So for primers, I only have three that became my best of. This one is the Laura Mercier. This is their Pure Canvas Blurring uh, Primer. This one is a cream, and I was a little skeptical, so I purchased it in a travel size. But this one did blur out my pores. It did blur out those areas where I just wanted it to be flawless and smooth. It gave me that little flawless finish. Now, another one I went back to, and you guys know for a while, I was just not so sure if I really liked it, but I felt like my makeup routine loves this. This is the Hourglass Mineral Veil Primer. I 
completely love this now i will say you do have to give yourself a break when using this because your makeup routine will get so used to it that you don't really see results that you're looking for when you try this so give it some time use it here and there don't use it every day i don't recommend doing that because after a while i was like this ain't doing nothing and i'm gonna stop repurchasing it i gave it some time went back to it and still fell in love with it and go that's what you needed. That's what you need, especially on those foundations or those makeup thing, makeup routines where you know you just need, it's missing something. This gave me that job. Now, something I have no regrets for, I will purchase this in the full size, but right now I have so many of the minis. This is the Tatcho Liquid Canvas Primer. This is actually better than the bomb primer that they have. Remember when they first came out with that big old bomb and you got to rub it, you put your fingers in it. This one is really, really better. Like... I would, I'm definitely planning to purchase the full size. I got a couple of the minis at Sephora because they were giving you 400 points. And I will say, I've used this so much that I'm like, yeah, I'm going to purchase the full size. This is really, really good. So, 2020, they came out with it. A lot of us, I know, was like, I'm not going to purchase that. But girl, this is good. Now, two setting sprays that I love hands down i have been looking for a setting spray that will not budge will not move will not let my oil seep through and will give me a long lasting wear first one is the smashbox photo finish setting spray this is the weightless one this one gives you zero oil coming through your skin love it love it love it but one of my favorites charlotte tilbury her airbrush flawless setting spray when you spray this on your face you feel like if you're combo oily skin like me you it's like sucked in it lasts all day on your face i do not have any issues when i tell you guys that i the first time i started wearing this i was like um i need to actually double moisturize or feel like my skin felt like it was just dry skin and then right now it's the winter time so i can only imagine how this setting spray is really gonna work during the fall and spring months right now girl when i apply this i already know nothing is moving nothing is budging this is the travel size, so once I get done with this, I'm going to go and purchase the full size. But that is it. That is thank you. That is it for my best of luxury makeup for 2020. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I recommend you guys do a video on it. Let me know. Tell me what was your best of luxury products for 2020, and I will talk to you guys in the next video. Stay blessed. Bye.